Okay, Shred Nation, today we're going to start out with a group experiment. Everyone stand up on your tiptoes, balance, maybe even move around. Okay, now fall back onto your heels and balance. It's a lot harder. So that's what we'll get into today, the difference between surfing on your toe side versus your heel side, and how asymmetrical surfboard design, specifically the Fancy Free model, tries to address that. Now I know that I'm always the one that's up here talking, but truthfully, one of my favorite things about Shred Show is the ability that it gives me to shut up and learn from different people who are either smarter than I am or have different experiences than I do. For example, if I wasn't the guy in the black room on YouTube, I would have never got the call to interview Donald Brink, who I've since come to know as one of the most courageous and inventive thinkers I've ever met. This year, he didn't just have his boards on exhibit at the Surfing Heritage and Cultural Center, which, by the way, is very worth checking out if you're ever in San Clemente, but he also spent 2015 touring through Europe, being featured in the inertia and building one of the most gorgeous boards I've ever seen out of the grossest wood you can imagine, all while surfing constantly and spending his weekdays shaping boards for stoked customers out of the original Hobie factory in San Clemente. I mean, do you, do you really... I mean, that is so fucking cool. Now, a friend of mine, Taz Yassin, who you see in this photo with Donald Brink, shapes a lot of boards for WSL competitor Aritz Aranburu. This is relevant because when Aritz is surfing backside, he likes boards from Taz that are shorter with more outline curve and have fuller rails. But when Aritz is surfing frontside, he likes boards that are longer with less outline curve and less foam in the rail. So basically, he likes a different style style of board depending on which direction he's headed in. The easiest way to grasp why this might be happening is through the lens of the traditional fish, because while everyone seems to like the positive sensations of surfing frontside on a fish, a lot of surfers say that when you surf backside on a traditional fish, it kind of feels a little bit weird. The interesting thing is that that traditional fish shape and the way that it feels surfing frontside was the starting point for two of the most popular asymmetrical surfboard designers of our generation. Ryan Birch and Donald Brink. When you look at this outline, you can imagine really easily that if you were to cut this board clean in half with a chainsaw and give each half to one of your friends, you could pretty easily convince that friend that each half of this board came from a different surfboard, and that's especially noticeable back in the tail. In fact, if you were to set this board down and follow the trace marks on this table, you can see that if the left side of this outline had been designed identical to the right side of this outline, you would find something that looked pretty fishy and familiar. Instead though, what Donald did is he shortened what would be the heel side rail for a regular footed surfer and he added more outline curve on that heel side rail to make the board less wide beneath the heel than it would be beneath the toe. So why would he do this? Well, because the same way that this kind of a straight long outline with a little bit of extra width beneath our toe is so useful going front side generating speed and drive, we don't have the same strength and coordination in our heel to maneuver an outline that is built for speed and forward motion the same way that we can with our toe. To make sense of this, consider that when you're surfing front side, you're using strength to push into the board, but when you're surfing heel side, you're more using your weight to kind of fall back to get a maneuver out of the board. That's where Donald is adding the maneuverability that comes with increased outline curve to compensate for our backside handicap. Now look up close at the tail rocker curve on this board, and you can see that there is more tail rocker curve on the left side of the board beneath the heel of a regular footed surfer and there's less tail rocker curve beneath their toes and the ball of their foot on the right side of the board. That's because the rocker curve in this board does not just bend from the center towards the tail and from the center towards the nose. This rocker curve is also twisting. See imagine my hand right here is the tail rocker curve curving up towards the sky like that. Since this tail rocker is twisted it's also curving this way to give more rocker beneath the heel while in the nose, the opposite is happening. The nose rocker curves up towards the sky like this, but then it's also twisting in the opposite direction. Remember that whenever you do a turn like we see Donald doing here on a fancy free, water is flowing across the board diagonally at a 45 degree angle. So in that photo that you just saw, the water line on the board is about right here, and this is the part of the board that is underwater. So that means that when Donald shifts his weight onto his heel to continue this turn, he's not just using the lever of his rocker 
rocker as it curves from here to here, he's also leveraging a rocker curve that curves out towards this point here. So what does all this really mean? It means that whenever you see Donald doing buttery bottom turns like this that make me want to go surfing, he's got everything beneath his heel from the outline to the rocker to the width of tail and the length of the rail designed specifically for an easy surf beneath his heel. A situation where you may notice this in your surfing is doing a backside cutback because you're driving down the line going backside and you can use this lever to immediately climb up the face where you transition to your toe side rail to do a long drawn out drivey cutback using this longer rail and lower tail rocker. As you drive back towards the white water still on your toe side you can go back and hit the white water and transition immediately to your heel using this lever again to reposition yourself to drive back down the face and further down the line. As many of you already know Donald also shapes asymmetries into the rails of his board so if you were to feel these, you would notice a very distinct difference in how the volume is distributed in each rail. The rail on the heel side of the board is more full. What that can do is it can add some more forward motion and buoyancy and make it a little bit easier to get speed going forward to offset all of the maneuverability that's added into the outline curve and the higher rocker and the shorter rail on your heel side. But it also just helps keep the board afloat in situations where many surfers often dig their rail and fall going backside. My favorite example of this is backside floaters because a lot of times you see average surfers trying to go down the line and then float up the face of the wave to do a floater in the lip. But instead on their way up the face to try to get to the lip, they dig rail and then kind of just fall over the back of the wave and their ride ends. When you have more float in support beneath your heel like this, it can help that rail stay afloat and make it up the face so that you can hit the lip like this with the lip right here instead of digging the rail and falling over the back of the wave. Deep single concave, pretty deep single concave, becoming a spiral V, a little bit deeper of a spiral V under the toe side, and a little bit shallower under the heel side. Now at this point it's important to recognize that asymmetrical surfboards are not like a category of board like a gun or a groveler or a fish or a standard shortboard. What it is is looking at each of those different categories of board and then optimizing each one for both heel side and toe side surfing. For example this sort of groveler shape which Donald has applied the same method of thinking to by adjusting the tail outline for a regular footed surfer. Keep in mind also that if you are a goofy footed surfer, Donald would make the same changes for you. They would just be opposite from what you see on this board. Looking at this shape as a whole, you can see that the overall rocker curve is very low going out to the tail and very low going out to the nose. This board's also really wide at about 21 and a half inches from one rail to the other. And it's a whopping two and 15 sixteenths inches thick. And you can see that 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 thickness carries all the way up into the nose, which is a hint that you could ride this pretty stably all the way forward, maybe even hanging a Cheater 5 off the front of the board. Measured on this rail here, the board is five foot two and a half inches long, and then measured on the opposite rail, it's an inch shorter at five foot one and a half inches long. I'm 6'1", 210 pounds, and I've been very happy surfing on these dimensions. If you had one of these made for yourself, you'd probably find that Donald makes you the shortest and the thickest board that you've ever ridden. And these kind of dimensions make it obvious that this shape would excel in waves maybe four to five foot and under that aren't really barreling and pitching. With the twisted rocker and asymmetries in its outline, you'd probably feel this board excelling most when you put it on rail or while you're transitioning from one rail to the other. But in situations where you're just going flat on the water, this much foam in such a compressed shape can still create its own magic when you're just planing. To wrap this up, I think Donald's patient approach to surfboard design makes the fancy free accessible for surfers from beginner all the way up to pro level. And if you've ever had any curiosity about what surfing an asymmetrical shape might feel like, I think his boards are an excellent starting point. Now Shred Nation, if you have ever surfed a Brink surf shape or any asymmetrical shape, please tell us your thoughts in the YouTube comments down below. We'll see you soon on Shred Show.